Today we are reviewing factoring. Now, what factoring means is that we are going to find the factors. And a factor is either the numbers or expressions that multiply to make a larger number for expression. So for example, to multiply to get 6, 6 has the factors of either 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. Those are its factors. Now, we what we want to look for in most of these is what's called a greatest common factor. This GCF is going to be the greatest factor between two terms when we compare them. So, for example, if we were looking for the GCF between 35 and 49, what we do is we break those down into trees, knowing that 35 is 5 times 7 and 49 is 7 times 7. Now, the biggest number that they have in common is the 7, so we'd say that the GCF is 7. So what would be the GCF of x squared and x? Well, if we broke these down, x squared is x times x, and x is just 1x. So if we're looking for common terms, what do they both have in common? If you're thinking that they both have an x, you're right. So since they both have an x, the greatest common factor that they share is this x. That is basic, basic factoring, basic like elementary school style factoring. Now when you get into high school, we'll be asked to do this with not just numbers, but with expressions. And first thing you'll be asked to do dealing with the GCF is to factor out the GCF. This is always what you want to look for first. Most factoring problems, or some factoring problems I guess, will have a GCF and that you take it out. Now when you're doing this, this is reverse distribution. Reverse distribution. So if we wanted to check real fast, all we'd have to do is distribute the numbers back together and we should end up back where we started. Your first example here is if we have the, the term 2x plus 2. That's an expression. We want to know what the first term in this expression has in common with the second term in this expression. And this one's pretty obvious that they both have a 2. So if I want to factor out that 2, that means I write it in front of a set of parentheses as if it's going to be distributed. And if I factored it out, I divide by that number and write down what's left. The 2's cancel out, I have x. The 2's cancel out, and I'm left with 1. So this factors a 2 times x plus 1. If I have 3x squared and I'm subtracting 15x, I want to factor out the GCF. What you'd look first is at the numbers. The greatest common factor between 3 and 15 is the number 3. And then, like we did up here, the largest or greatest common factor between x squared and x is x. Now, if I factored that out, it's like I'm dividing by 3x with both of these. The 3's will cancel x squared divided by x is x, 15 divided by 3 is 5, and x is cancel. And I have factored out the GCF. The most important skill today though that we're going to practice a lot is to factor trinomials. We've done this before, so it should look familiar. This is one of those fundamental skills that if you leave Algebra 1 without knowing how to do, you're going to be lost in Algebra 2. Now today we're only going to concentrate on when a is equal to 1. To next class we'll work on when a is not 1, which we skipped during uh, when we first learned this. And the way that we solve these is with one of those X puzzles. If you don't remember what I mean by that, you'll see soon. So in general, you will have some equation. ax squared plus bx 
plus C. And what you're going to want to do is set up an X puzzle. You do this by multiplying A times C in the top and writing down whatever B is in the bottom. Your job is to find two factors, which we'll label P and Q. Now P and Q have to multiply together to get A times C. So multiply to get the top, and they must add together to get the denominator. Or sorry, the bottom, not the denominator, bottom of the X puzzle. When you have solved this X puzzle and you have two numbers, P and Q, that multiply to the top and add to the bottom, all that you'll do is bring them straight out of this puzzle using the same sign and write them down. So you'd have X plus P, because P is positive, and X plus Q, because Q is positive. Whatever those numbers are, and this is the factored form of this trinomial. So let's see an example. So we'll use actual numbers instead of just letters that represent these numbers. Let's say we start with x squared minus 7x minus 18. We set this up a times c. Well, a is 1, c is 18, so the top is negative 18. And negative 7 goes in the bottom. Well, I'm looking for numbers that multiply to 18 and add to 9. And it's imperative that you know your times tables because if you knew them, you wouldn't have to do this next step. If we multiply or try the, all the factors of 18, you have 1 and 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6. Now, which of these combinations can get me 7? I know that if the top is negative, the only way to multiply numbers and get negative is if one is positive and one is negative. Well, if that's the case, then what if I added together negative 2 and 9? Is that correct? No, because look, negative 2 plus 9 would give me positive 7. So you'd have to switch your signs here. Negative 9 plus 2, well, yes, that is negative 7. So we would know that this factors to x minus 9, x plus 2. That is the factored form of this polynomial. This is standard form, factored form. If this looks familiar and you think you got it at this point, go ahead and go to the worksheet. But if you need a few more practice problems, go on ahead and flip this paper over. Okay, we have six practice problems on the back before I'll let you go. We have b squared plus 8b plus 7. We want to factor all of these. Okay, the instructions will say factor, period. That's it. To factor means to get it in its factored form, things that will multiply together to make the larger expression. We know that to factor these, we set up a next puzzle. A times C, B. Only thing that works there is 7 times 1. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 plus 1 is 8. So we have that this is B plus 7, B plus 1. The second problem for you to try is... a uh, n squared minus 11n plus 10. Right now, pause this video and give it a shot. Let's check your work. 10 in the top, negative 11 in the bottom. The only thing that adds to negative 11 and multiplies into 10 is negative 10 and negative 1. So this polynomial will factor to n minus 10 n minus 1. Here's one more for you to try. We have m squared plus m minus 90. Give it a shot right now. Negative 90 should go on the top. Since there's an invisible number here, that invisible number is 1, which means the only thing that will work here is positive 10 and negative 9. So this trinomial will factor to m plus 10, m minus 9.
n squared plus 4n minus 12 is our next example. We would set up the x puzzle. Negative 12 will go in the top, 4 would go in the bottom. Multiple, uh, things that multiply to 12 and add to 4. Again, if you need to do this, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Because it's negative in the top, 1 must be positive and 1 must be negative. The only combination here that will work is positive 6 and negative 2. So this trinomial factors to n plus 6, n minus 2. Second to last example here, we have k squared minus 13k plus 40. If we set up this x puzzle, a is 1, c is 40, 1 times 40 is 40, negative 13 in the denominator. Oh boy, factors of 40. Well, let's start at the beginning. You have 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 3 doesn't go, 4 and 10, 5 and 8, 6 doesn't go, and 7 doesn't go. And there's all our factors. The only way that this can add up to 13 is it's some combination of 5 and 8, and in this case, they both have to be negative to get negative 13. So this would factor to k minus 5, k minus 8. Last but not least, this is x squared minus x minus 56. Negative 56 in the top, negative 1 in the bottom. Multiply, things that multiply to 56 and add to 1, the only combination here is negative 8 and positive 7. So this factors to x minus 8, x plus 7. Now at this point, if you don't believe me that this works, here's how you would do a 30 second check to solve. If these are factors, that means they should multiply and get me back here. Factor, multiply. Factor, multiply. So let's multiply and check our work. Now you can either FOIL or you can set up the box. I'm going to FOIL. If you forgot what FOIL stands for, that's your first, your outside, your inside, and then your lasts. Those are the things that you're going to multiply in that order. The first two terms in this polynomial in each factor is x. So I multiply x times x. Well, that's x squared. Cool. we are done first. Outsides. Okay, things on the outside of the entire expression. Well, this is an outside of the expression, and here's an outside of the expression. So I'm going to multiply those together. This is 7x. Inside. Well, okay, well, x and 7 are, in, are outsides, and this negative 8 and x must be insides. Negative 8 times x is negative 8x. And the last two things are negative 8 and 7. Just like x's were the first, the numbers are the lasts. Negative 8 times 7 is negative 56. All that's left to do is to combine like terms. Here are my like terms right here. If I combine them together, I get x squared minus x minus 56 and check it out. Hooray! It's the same thing. So factoring, again, is just backwards distribution, which is backwards multiplication. And factoring is an essential skill that you need to have whenever you leave algebra. So after this, you have a worksheet that needs to be turned in before you leave. Please do your best on it, and ask your neighbor if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.